juste, je prends la, la parole juste un minute pour introduire quelqu'un que vous connaissez déjà par, je pense, non, mais vous vous êtes présenté pendant la journée, mais sinon, vu que, que cette partie-là est réservée à, finalement à entendre un team de recherche de, de, de l'école, super fort, et qui va nous présenter la recherche saint denis avec son site, et l'expo, et surtout les livres qui viennent de sortir. On est très cité de voir. Donc je vais recevoir Yuri Kravchenko, Manon Portera, Javier Fernandez Contreras. Vous allez vous alterner vous, toute seule. Et bonne chance et bonne présentation. Merci. So hello everybody. So yes, tonight we will uh, present uh, just a few chapter. Let's say the premises of uh, of Saint Denis of the research uh, program. And if we talk about uh, premises, let me uh, start with these pictures. Who kind of like uh, was there from the origin, and that we cannot find uh, randomly on Google. Basically, we just type corner shop nights, and uh, one of the first results is this image. And if we, when we dig more into this image, uh, what we thought that is somewhere in, in Pakistan or India appears to be at the end in uh, Ireland, close to Dublin. And this is, uh, shows a, a, a lot about uh, the condition of, of the night today, where you don't really know where you are. The light is uh, d not so different from the day to the night uh, condition. And of course, th this uh, image intrigues us a lot. From this uh, starting point, we ask the students of the first year uh, in 2019, correct? Yeah, 19, um, to work uh, with, with it, with this image first, and then f with different image. We ask the student to reproduce in a model uh, the exact representation of this, uh, of this image. And of course, um, making the measure out of the image itself and try to reproduce absolutely uh, uh, the most uh, accurate and precisely the, the, the image itself. From this work of extracting, let's say, from the 2D image, the 3D uh, model, uh, they, we ask the student to coming back to the, uh, to the image itself. So from, from this kind of uh, um, iteration from, from the model and back to the, to the, to, to the image, we thought that actually we learned something about the uh, atmospheric condition. This process uh, was repeat, repeated with uh, other groups. Uh, this is an image uh, taken from somewhere in, uh, in the suburb of, uh, of Lausanne, if I don't mistaken. Uh, and also, uh, they, um, the student evolve, uh, tried to evolve the parameters to ac actually create different sort of a night through the model. And of course, create new conditions. Uh, this way of, uh, of working uh, from the image to the 3D um, permit us to uh, start uh, also um, to create some scenes. The difference between space and scenes, of course, is the fact that you, you integrate uh, the, the viewer. And uh, placing and, and bringing the name Saint de Nuit instead of space or, or a night scene, instead of a night space, of course, um, or, uh, make that the space becomes something that you see and you analyze. And that's how a bit we, we start our research by try to looking what we create, looking the space that we, we first saw and then, and then bring it. This is, a, for example, an image of a, of a parking um, somewhere. <laughs> it was a random image and it becomes this uh, one to two model um, th that we also try to place the, the viewer in situation of, 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 of seeing this scene. Of course, the, 
camera and the image was uh, very well involved, but because the camera was actually our sort of a translator from, from uh, our eyes to look from this 3D to the 2D. And from all that, uh, our chance, and uh, thanks to, to Javier Contreras, to Manon, of course, who did uh, uh, amazing uh, work, and the students, of course, we managed to bring this an exhibition in, let's say, in one-to-one -one scale, uh, uh, this kind of a big laboratorium into, into Lausanne, into the Forum of Architecture, FAR. So I propose here in a very short time just a sort of a journey around these five nights who was uh, uh, for us the five night of the exhibition. Let's say that FAR usually does exhibition in a day condition. Normally it's open from eight to six every day. Um, except the weekend, and we tried, to, we start to reverse this model to bring this idea of an exhibition action, uh, which bringing that uh, we just open five nights, and from these five nights we create scenes, and we become ourselves the protagonist of the scenes, and we let the spectator uh, view that. We start with a plan. This is one of the a plan. There was many, many ones um, when we actually. Uh, shake uh, different uh, thematic differences together. So that was the entrance. I will come back a bit to, to, to this, but that was the entrance of the, um, of the um, place. And I, I show you first the, the space itself when it's actually a mix of, diff of five thematic that I will show you just after. Basically, we paint in black the full um, the full space, and uh, there was this kind of uh, there was this full selling which was there already that we cover in with a black square. And from these lines, uh, we start to create a sort of a matrix system, who was uh, all around the um, all around the space. And then from that, the student uh, were able to build uh, some scenes from that thematic. So let me enter to the first uh, first night, which is uh, also belong to the first uh, thematic, the shop. Um, the, the, this group of students uh, start to create uh, from the the first uh, photography that you saw. They start to create a, an absolutely fake and real uh, trompe l'oeil. Uh, basically, this is normally the entrance of of the, the exhibition that they transform into a corner shop which could be actually anywhere from Ireland to, um, to Pakistan, including Toulon when we reinstall the, this piece uh, not, uh, after this exhibition. From on this night, uh, we invite uh, Martin Coat and uh, Sukhdev Sandhu uh, to collaborate, to debate, um, and of course we invite uh, the public. Everybody was invited to pass through the corner shop, which looked like a corner shop, of course, but when you look more carefully, all the brand was making uh, no sense, like this Kinder who was a Tinder, etc., etc. So we made a sort of a surrealist uh, version, or, or we, we kind of extract the core of, of, what, of, the, of any image of those uh, corner shops to create this kind of... Uh, ultimate corner shop, which is actually here. And of course, more we was um, entering to, the, to this corner shop, uh, more we actually, there was a, a reverse side, this one, which actually was absolutely uh, 2D and was absolutely based on, on the idea of, of, of a panel. Ah, yeah, this is not from me, but I guess <laughs> it's cool. Make it more interesting. Um, though this corner shop was actually a sort of um, melting pot of um, many uh, studies that, including our corner shop, which is, yeah, this one, um, to sort of create the, this uh, universal uh, corner shop. And from that, they also start to work with a different type of architecture, which is a branding or package architecture. It basically, there was not a real space, it was just object together agglutinate to create the space. The, those um, articles was of course distributed uh, this night uh, to the participants which are there. 
It was a very interesting process because uh, basically um, Lausanne is a, who, people who knows and who live there, Lausanne could be very um, a, a police city with a lot of rules, more than even in, in Geneva. And we, got, we start to get uh, interaction with, um, with authorization, uh, uh, with a schedule, uh, until when we are open, the police came, and all this bring also like a, a suddenly a, a, this fakeness provoke real interaction, which was interesting to, to, to analyze. And it was even difficult to explain to the police that actually everything is fake, but that's not Okay, next, next night, uh, the movie, of course, part of the night, uh, uh, the, the movie explore, of course, a lot uh, the thematic of the night, maybe even more than, than the architecture. From, from that point, we invite uh, Mathieu Barrère, who um, is a filmmaker of L'Epoque, a movie, uh, Mathieu Barrère uh, kind of filmed for record, let's say, uh, during two years, uh, several nights in uh, Place de la République, letting the camera just uh, record that, and we, we thought that it was very interesting to invite him. And for that, uh, the students, they realize uh, boxes, boxes of space that could be unfolded the night of, of the movie. And uh, from those boxes unfolded, they create this, uh, let's say, Fellinian idea of the night, uh, or the classical uh, uh, idea, which, which, which are there. So there was a cinema one, cinema box, the ticket place also, and the transportable uh, uh, popcorn uh, station, which are represented here. And of course, we watched the movie and we did a, an interview with, with Mathieu. City was also an interesting night, very different. Um, it was the 18th of May, and uh, we invite uh, uh, mainly Isabel uh, Corten um, and uh, the, our friend, uh, or the, you, you know very well, the stalker. The student work also, um, the starting point of the, of, the stu of the student was this image of, uh, of course, uh, an American uh, uh, oil station. And they start to isolate what actually, what will be the minimum of the space needed to give the, inf the general information. It's a bit the process of Dogville. It's a, it's a process of subtraction. If you remove the sky, if you remove the, the, um, the floor, uh, the car, the oil uh, station uh, system itself, and you only take the roof and the light, is it still, uh, is it still uh, performing, the, is it still doing the job of being a night space? The answer uh, that the student proposed was actually to remove as much as they can and to only take the symbol, the American symbol that you, of course, Venturi uh, theorize, and Scott Brown, um, with, this, um, uh, with this panel, with this enseigne, and this light, who was actually floating in the space. And they create this kind of uh, dense floor slash uh, old uh, station right here. They continue with this process. This is a one to two scale. And they continue with this process with a, um, a bus station in Lausanne, also trying to take the most abstract out of it. And because it was a one to two model, they invite some, some children to kind of recreate the real scene. After this uh, moment inside of the space, um, all the visitors and the students was invited to do a big uh, tour uh, at night in Lausanne, doing um, which t typical from the stalker process, um, let's say constructing by walking. It's sort of a derive, uh, of course, uh, a Guy Debord derive around the city. So this creates a very, uh, of course, funny plus uh, a research in action, let's say, and of course, in, with this, uh, of course, with this uh, uh, warm atmosphere. Actually, I was, I wasn't there, but you could uh, say how it was, right? Um, and they, they, and what it was very interesting also in terms of taking the city as a playground 
and how they actually, uh, how the city was activated and how we could inhabit the city. Well, that's what's happened when it's a bit late. And uh, this is Manon, actually. There, um, here you can see that the, how the public space can, is also used as an inter interaction. Javier, who's talking to someone. Voila. Club. Uh, we were very happy with this night because, of course, as an architect or researcher, we couldn't expect that much from as an organizer of, of parties, but hopefully student was there to help us. And uh, they recreate the idea of a club. Don't forget, it's a scene. We don't make an actually a real club. We was try to do the scene of the real club, but we, we was a bit, uh, we were surprised that this scene actually worked as a real, a real space. We invite uh, Octave Perrault, Paul Esteve, Daniel Zamabid, very special guests for this night, uh, and of course, DJs. The space was the, the dance floor itself, that actually, uh, recently I saw that it was reproduced, this floor, the end light floor from the back was reproduced even in, a, in the last movie from uh, Casa de Gucci, the last movie who just uh, recreated, they made this floor, so it looked like it's an archetype of a dance floor. Uh, floor. Um, they produce uh, the moon uh, right there, which was kind of uh, act like a, like a symbol right here. And they reproduce some facade from the city in another scale, which was actually the DJ uh, station. And of course, the night, uh, the way they distribute the, the beer, it's also very uh, linked with the, the how the how the people how the young people also experiment the night which is not necessary in a bar in a discotheque but also outside in a in a different uh, wild uh, way so the beer was distributed exclusively in this in these uh, bikes of course we have got our guests but that's not the point of tonight Voila. And let's finish with the food, uh, food night, which was also some, something that we shouldn't uh, left behind. Of course, the food, the idea of uh, meeting at, in the evening was, was important. And um, we decide, uh, uh, according also with the students, we decide to create a Russian dinner. Of course, don't see anything linked with my nationality, but it's have a bit of a link. We decide also why Russian, because uh, basically, of course, there are many traditions. We took this one because there are many rituals. That's also from, let's say, my own souvenirs. There are many rituals who even like a, become like a landmark in Russia, like the vodka that you throw away. But it's also about toast, speech, and, and so on. So we decide to take this thematic, but of course, I was not involved. The student was involved to this culture, they was not necessarily Russian, and they tried to understand how to make a Russian dinner in a very, let's say, scientific way. The student uh, and us invite also Collective Domingo, um, four young artists who collaborate a lot with, uh, with food to help us to, to make the event. So we have a first, uh, first um, the first entrance was suddenly uh, let's say activate that is you saw in the beginning of the of the presentation they enlight the the table with um, um, how it's called the like uh, capusta and uh, cucumber um, uh, recipe uh, with the, you know the way you conserve the the product here and then there was a first first moment of, of speech and toast here and then the student was invited to, to this big table made uh, by the student itself. The bowl was also made by the student, the bread, all the lights, everything was, uh, was actually uh, activated by them. And of course this night, some of you been there, uh, yeah. And uh, wasn't I, we were serving uh, borscht, which is very traditional, and we tried to, uh, to bring back this, this, uh, this ritual without being uh, Russian. Voilà, some details of it. And we finish the dinner here with um, 
kalbasa, it's, you say in Russian, but it's actually sauc or saucisson in French, sausage, uh, made, uh, of course, absolutely fakely in chocolate. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Yuri, for, for this uh, nice presentation that being, brings good memories of what we are uh, developing in the, in the department. Uh, so just to elaborate a bit on, on what j uh, was just presented, uh, actually with this exhibition, other than the topic itself, other than the relationship between night and architecture and sense de nuit and night scenes, we are also trying to uh, reshape uh, the architectural event itself. So this is part of uh, uh, ongoing uh, ambition that we are developing in the department throughout the events that we that we do. Uh, what is an architectural event nowadays? You know, for many for many decades, uh, we have envisioned architectural meetings as, as events uh, that are mainly contemplative, in which like actually visitors go there uh, to contemplate and to engage. Uh, with the content uh, as if they were consumers. And here in this exhibition that you just show, uh, we, we are really envisioning visitors as performers. Performers who can not only see, not only visit, but mainly contribute to the development of architectural knowledge. Uh, that's why uh, the entanglements between uh, content, presentations, and container were uh, very extreme. And for us, what was extremely interesting was to see uh, how even uh, before the party started, like for example, when we did the nightclub in Lausanne, uh, people were already queuing uh, to see the lectures on the history of nightclub. You know? and, and, and this is very interesting because it tells that there is a role to be played by the audience in the architecture events. Uh, and obviously uh, that means also that uh, the catalog of this exhibition uh, could not be uh, published uh, at the opening of the exhibition itself because the exhibition was a, a leo or a milieu of production of knowledge and then uh, everything had to be uh, recorded and archived, uh, which is why we are presenting this book today that will be published uh, finally after two years uh, next week. Uh, so it's been a long time coming, but we are very happy to say that finally the book and the result of this exhibition is coming up uh, next week. Uh, and I'm going to do a, a sort of a kind of traveling throughout the book as if it, as if it was a plan seconds in cinema just to show how uh, events become images, become texts, and how we go from there to editing and publications. Uh, so these are the images you have just seen, which are like the visual navigation of the beginning of the book, in which actually we see the, em uh, the emptiness of the space, you know? like spaces are just empty uh, without uh, people, and this is a kind of visual navigation before the action starts. And then the book is divided up into obviously a classic presentation in which we present the hypothesis of uh, what the exhibition and this research project is about and about the absence of night in the uh, traditional construction of architectural discourse. And then it takes the form in terms of graphic design of a traveling in which images start to navigate all across the book. Of course, with a lot of people and then therefore the space is occupied by people, activated and performed by people, students and visitors. And then the uh, events and the scenes are kind of uh, presented as individual uh, chapters, uh, each of them uh, belonging to each independent night. So we see shop. Uh, it's also very important to understand that in the case of shop, but also in the other evenings that we did, uh, the uh, scenography itself was acting as a proxy to uh, stimulate the content of the discussion. So for example, when Martin Kohout and uh, Sukhdev Sandhu arrived to Farlosan on that very night, uh, before they started talking, uh, of course they entered uh, to the space through the corner shop itself uh, with this kind of uh, trompe l'oeil atmosphere. And obviously that uh, prompted the discussion they had. So they didn't come with a preset uh, presentation, so it was not pre-format, it was really instantaneous. And these were two people who didn't know each other before, and then the space and the connection between these two people made up the content that we uh, produced and transcribed. So it's impossible to disengage the content of the book from the uh, content and the production of the uh, spatiality of the exhibition itself. Uh, then of course we 
some students from a few years ago uh, are in the pictures. Uh, we will, of course, be giving each of the students who participated uh, a book uh, as soon as we receive it, this is for sure. Then we did the film uh, with the film L'Epoque, as Yuri said before. The City with uh, Isabel Corten and uh, a Stalker Collective and all the performance and the rive that you have just seen. The Club uh, on the history of nightclub, which has become a, so to say, very hot topic uh, over the last few years, with Vitra and Villa Noail uh, working on it. Daniel Thamarbid as well. Obviously the party. Uh, we got uh, an official license uh, from the city of Lausanne to be a legal nightclub that night. Uh, and we could stay open till 8 a.m. in the morning, as far as I remember. And uh, at the entrance, we had like two students of bachelor students like saying to the people outside, like very seriously, no, we are full. You know, we are full. You have to wait outside. Uh, and it was great. It was a great event, great atmosphere. Uh, it was fun. And then when we did the final uh, dinner, the final Russian dinner uh, that closed the event, uh, actually before the dinner we also had a fantastic presentation by Julian Zaneta on the history of banquet and how uh, eating together has also shaped uh, night culture uh, dramatically in the construction of uh, Western and non-Western uh, societies. So the book itself can be seen as a catalog of an exhibition, as an discourse that is trying to give agency to the uh, centrality of night uh, in architectural theory. And it can also be seen as a collection of, uh, of photographs and pictures of some friends and colleagues working together. So to that extent, it's a kind of multimedia uh, production that entails and encompasses like the uh, professional, pedagogic, and also to some extent the personal friendliness of sharing these kind of experiences together within the Department of Interior Architecture. And finally, uh, the group picture with the students and the team who worked together on this. So coming back to the hypothesis that I presented this morning, uh, if the exhibition itself was trying to reshape the architectural event, we also came to the conclusion that uh, setting up a research project on uh, the relationship between night and architecture should also try to reshape the format of what we understand by research. Uh, trying to devise mechanisms, methods of constructing knowledge that uh, are very precise and useful for this project, but that could be applied to other uh, projects and forms of research. So uh, one year and a half ago, we set up uh, this research project uh, within the Department of Interior Architecture, uh, integrated by a group of colleagues and friends. So obviously, uh, Yuri Krapchenko, uh, Manon Portera, uh, Vera Sacchetti, Roberto Tsankan, and myself, uh, as head of, of the Department of Interior Architecture and also head of this research project. And then we started to, uh, in a way, uh, th through this website, uh, we also try to create a kind of database of things that we are doing related to this topic that can be shared uh, from the very beginning. So the main hypothesis of the project itself is that uh, we wanted all the content to be as transparent, as shareable, and online as possible since the very beginning. Since we already had some content, uh, we had already done this, this bar, which is called the Lost Lab, uh, which which was for Designer Saturdays in Langenthal, as a reinterpretation of the American bar by, by Adolf Loss. Uh, and we had already done the exhibition in Lausanne that you have seen uh, right before. We could already uh, start off from something. A few months before uh, the kickoff of the project, uh, we also invited to, to, to head Geneva, uh, Richard Leven, uh, the director of El Croquis, to do a night edition of El Croquis, uh, taking photographs of uh, prominent uh, modern buildings uh, in the city of Geneva uh, that somehow uh, were photographed by students uh, following the style of a croquis, but uh, instead of making day pictures, uh, most of the photographs were taken 
uh, from blue hour to uh, night time. It was extremely interesting uh, to be in discussion with, uh, with Richard Levin, uh, to, to know the interiority of the magazine itself, and to understand very simple things, such as the fact that the photography of the journal has always been taken, uh, in most of the cases, by the same photograph, uh, who is Isao Suzuki, uh, whose position was institutionalized after number 40. But even for number zero, even when they hired different photographs, uh, the two founders of the journal always accompanied the photographer to take the pictures. And this is very unique in the, in the history of publishing and media and architecture, because normally photography uh, is outsourced or there's a pool of photographers, but it's very rare that the two founders of the magazine, from the very first number to the last number that was published a few weeks ago, uh, have always been next to the photographer to tell uh, him, like, this is the picture, this is the point of view, I want this kind of framing. And uh, they envision, and it's a kind of parody, but actually sometimes they make that, but they envision really the photographer as a kind of robotic presence who is really uh, taking on uh, their uh, instructions, so to say. So we told Richard, could you do exactly the same thing with our students? Could you really <laughs> uh, accompany them and tell them uh, where to look from, uh, how to look at architecture, uh, following kind of the style of a crocus. And apart from that, could you also, like, once you have taken the, the pictures, uh, could you tell them how to lay out the magazine? So we could go from image to layout, et cetera, which is a, a way of understanding that architecture as this course and the absence of night or the presence of a night in the architectural discourse is fabricated. So there's always a fabrication uh, which goes from the physical reality of architecture as an object to its fabrication and media. It was extremely pedagogic. Uh, the students loved. So here we see some buildings in the city of Geneva. This was a still blue hour, so Richard was still happy because it was not entirely night. Uh, this was almost night, still blue hour. Uh, and again, as I said before, throughout these two weeks, we could understand with him the frontality of the point of view, the understanding of architecture as an object from the outside, and that's why they hate uh, night, because when you have night, you lose the contours and the profiles and the silhouette of architecture as an object. The absence of human beings in pictures, the recurrent absence of human beings in pictures uh, in most of the cases. So obviously, uh, if architecture is envisioned as object, night uh, is more complex to deal with. But other than that, obviously this picture is very clear. As you can see, uh, it's hard to recognize the boundaries and the silhouette of the building. But other than that, it was extremely interesting to understand to what point uh, the privacy of, of professional planning is entangled with the production of this course uh, in its own way. So basically when they set up the, uh, the, the planning of publication, if one architect has buildings in seven countries, they draft uh, a trip plan and they go to all the different countries, but they allocate precise days to each of the visits. Meaning by that, that they have like two days to visit like five buildings in America, two days to visit uh, three buildings in South America, etc. And uh, it doesn't matter whether it rains, whether it's sunny, whether it's summer, winter, etc. They always follow their plan. Uh, and that's how uh, you can see that there is a visual language, but sometimes it's raining and sometimes it's sunny, etc. They don't really care about blue hour or these things. But night in their planning is always reserved for dinners with the architects. And therefore, uh, the absence of night is in the magazine is in a way related uh, to a preference for daytime photography, but it's also related to a way of planning uh, the working trips of the team and of constructing the discussions of the, with the architects who are published in the magazine. And it's in these discussions how they also ask the published architects, who is the next architect in this country? Who is the architect you are interested in? That's how they discovered Sejima, for example, and that's how they have discovered uh, a lot of architects. Um, so when we, uh, when we set up the research project, uh, for us it was also important to create the, the website as an open platform that can be shared uh, by all the people. By can, that can be appropriated by uh, people interested in the topic. And that's why also we included a very simple uh, and synthetic bibliography that people can uh, look at. But that's also why we uh, are associating in a certain way, in a very open format, other projects that are being developed uh, within, uh, within, the, within the department. Even though sometimes the connections might be anecdotal or sometimes they can be very strong. This is a project we presented in uh, Design Parade Toulon a few months ago, 
uh, revisiting uh, the uh, Kronenhalle by uh, Trix and Robert Hausmann uh, in Zurich. Uh, and it's a way of appropriating projects and interiors in a very sometimes random way and creative way, uh, making the point and making the case also that research is in its very essence a form of creation. So uh, wherever we uh, iterate, uh, sample, uh, collage, and reshape kind of interiors, if there is a connection with night, uh, it's a form of research on the, on the topic. Obviously, it's one of the most prominent projects uh, of the department uh, over the last few months. Everybody of interiors, a milk bar, we presented in Alcova uh, a few weeks ago, uh, taking the reference from the Korova bar from Stanley Kubrick, uh, from the mythical film uh, A Clockwork Orange, and reshaping it in a kind of uh, well, contemporary and less aggressive way, so to say, and, uh, but uh, extremely hedonistic at the same time, and trying to keep the sensuality of the original shapes, of the uh, line caryatids that were in the original films, whereas rendering it more abstract and less explicit. And I think that uh, here we can see a previous version of fantastic lecture that you delivered uh, today, Lea. Uh, but for us, it's very interesting to understand uh, that um, it's now one, th one year that the project has been ongoing. And now we are starting to receive, in a way, kind of contributions by people who are external to the project. That means that the hypothesis of rendering the project open and open source since the very beginning is working quite well. This is a workshop that uh, will be done in, in February. Uh, by Paul Perron uh, with EPFL students and head students. Uh, so Paul, she's an assistant of our department. But uh, originally, uh, not associated to the project, but uh, it has become, uh, in a way, uh, a collective endeavor, so to say. Uh, this is a course which has been delivered this semester by the people of the Cruising Pavilion. And a book will be coming up uh, next year also on the topic of Cruising Pavilion uh, that they have been developing uh, since uh, the 2018 Venice Biennale. So I really uh, invite those of you interested in the topic to, to go through it and to uh, check it as a database and to come to us if you have proposals that might be somehow related uh, to, the, to the topic. Because our very uh, point and statement is really to try to render uh, the centrality of night in the production of architecture as visible as possible. Uh, I think I will leave the floor now to uh, Manon Portera or to Yuri Kravchenko, who are also going to present two workshops that were done with the students uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, so who wants to go first? So Manon will go first. As we said before, Manon has been uh, uh, a central part of the project since the very beginning, since the very first exhibition we did in Lausanne. And recently, uh, with uh, the assistants at Head Genève, she uh, conducted uh, this workshop for the opening week with the bachelor students at Head Geneva. So, Manon, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. So, hello, I'm uh, Manon Portora. Um, as uh, Javier said, I'm also part of the Saint Denis Research Project. Today, I will present you another project that we developed in uh, September, which was called um, After Sunset Before Sunrise. Most of you know it since it was the inaugural week for the bachelor students in uh, interior architecture that we developed with the other assistant of the department. After sunset before sunrise, took the city of Geneva as a case study and explored its uh, transformation at the very ephemeral moment of um, sunset. So in order to explore and understand the specificity of the city by night. During this week, we questioned how intangible elements can influence tangible elements. So, for instance, how can light, sound, and activity can influence um, our perception of buildings, streets, or any other physical artifact from the city? Um, the workshop was framed from afternoon to night in order to really experience the, the topic. And we started with a group walk through the city. Seven typologies of places has been defined and assigned to seven, seven different groups of students. 
So the zoo of Bois de la Bâtie, the skate park of Plan Palais, the passages of the Old Town, the promenade de la Lavandière, the bus station, the sportive complex of Quai Wilson, and uh, the public bus of uh, Bain des Paquis. Uh, the week was divided into three main parts. We started with um, discovering through observing. The idea was to take the time to observe and identify components of each site. So human and non-human interaction with a specific focus on the physical experience of the space. What do we see? What do we smell? What do we touch? And then the second phase was about understanding through documenting, how to show the material and non-material conditions uh, that are defining the places, how to find techniques of representation to talk about the assemblage, the assemblage of materiality, light, form, atmospheres. So the student started with a kit and then really took the freedom of uh, documenting through different medium, photo, pictures, videos, drawings, etc. And the last part was uh, presentation. Uh, was all about presenting through staging into the site. So the staging of the different components of the places its human and non-human interaction, its history, its temporality, and its material quality has really addressed the night as a space-time of new opportunities. I will quickly go through the different sites, and then I will um, hand with the video that documented the, the walk through the, the different sites. So the first site was the Bois de la Bâtie, and a sound performance has been staged to experience the noise pollution produced by the park and the human activities that invade the nature. In Plan Palais, the presentation took the form of a static body performance in relation to the shape of the skate park that is getting ep empty at night. In the old town, the narrow stairs of a passage became a place to sit and discover, to discover a projection that were presenting a series of videos highlighting the sensory experience of the narrow passage at the very specific moment of uh, sunset. The installation at the Promenade de Lavandière aimed to establish a connection between the history of the promenade by projecting old photography alongside current ones. A light installation allowed to reactivate the bus station of Geneva, building for the time frame of only one night, questioning the purpose of this abandoned building in the heart of Geneva. The K. Wilson Sport Complex has been documented through a series of photos exhibited directly on site to show the contrast of activities between days and night. At Bain des Paquis, a film projection emphasized architectural elements in relation with the water and the way they reacted to the change of light. So this uh, common walk through the different sites has been documented the last night of the week into a video that I will uh, share with you now. Nous observons la gare routière. C'est un espace temporel. Nous remarquons qu'il est dicté par l'horaire et qu'il y joue un rôle principal. 
Il agit comme une bulle, un espace où on vit le temps, mais pas le moment. Personne ne vient ici pour passer un moment. Sa robe noire d'orange scintillait, comme pour souligner l'étreinte d'un flot peintre des bains qui à sa guise les éteint du soir au matin. And now Yuri is going to present you the workshop that has been done the same week, but with the master student. Okay, same week, exactly another configuration. You was uh, outside and we, uh, we our students, we were inside. Uh, thanks to Valentin Dubois also that we, we were uh, working together uh, closely uh, to make that happen. Um, so we, we had the some masters that some of you are here and we develop a different sort of uh, scenes in another scale let's say so we was involved more to the idea of uh, the still life uh, here and uh, try to follow the the tradition uh, the, like the 19th century tra tradition to another chapter Of course, we saw some link uh, between uh, the still life with the product who are on it, and especially for the, uh, the, the food element, and uh, another idea of, uh, of with the still life it's, it, that it is also like a landscape, right? Or a city, uh, city landscape. So here on your right, you have the OMA project for the Al for the Halles de Paris, which actually, if you Zoom, if you abstra abstract yourself, uh, could be also a, a simple table with some objects on it. This idea of object, composition of object together, uh, sounds uh, interesting for us to kind of develop this uh, new type of scene uh, that uh, which are represented here in these pictures. So basically we ask uh, the student to develop um, dark and marine, uh, marine uh, scenes. Um, had the Geneva's Maya master students were invited to explore the dark and marine uh, depths through the conception and realization of noc nocturnal still life with the constraint of using essentially only food element and light. So kind of a narrow subject, let's say. Um, and uh, our student produced six uh, results six groups, six results, that I will just pass quickly. Uh, first of them, uh, work with, um, uh, with gelatin exclusively and develop uh, uh, shapes uh, around uh, this uh, sort of technology and develop a sort of a new uh, landscape, new city. The image produced um, and the lights produced are ac actually quite uh, interesting for the development of a still life, but also for development of an idea of a city actually not so far from the Omas, Omas one. Uh, this group uh, work carefully with one painting, the Menento uh, Mori uh, that you might know. And they simply did the same procedure that you saw already before on the other nocturnal scenes from the other semester, they try to reproduce carefully the scenes in a, in a very dark condition. So after analyzing uh, some uh, uh, still life, they propose their own, uh, uh, their own representation here. Um, so this, this is actually the photography of their own installation. In this uh, project, um, the student try to dig into the, um, the depths of the ocean. And they actually create an interesting movie that I will show you now. Do 
just stop for a second and look once again. We intoxicated it. Nothing grows here anymore. The soil is dead. Now we must dive deeper and deeper, harvesting the elk, the main protein source left, the underwater fields. Now we descend into darkness, floating among the meadows of lights and colors. They feed us, keep us alive. Can you see now? Look at the sample of the ocean bed, the aquatic buffet, colors of algae matter. Each one comes from different depth and gives you the right calorie intake. Stick to the protocol. Put on gloves, grab your tweezers, and take the elk out of the tube. Remember, follow the daily dose prescribed to you. Swallow now, and come back later. Uh, next group of students work on the idea of a sort of a uh, crime scene, and they propose uh, uh, which the, the, um, the murder, no, let's say the victim of this uh, crime was actually a fish and they tried to develop this kind of, uh, we would say in French, pièce à conviction, or proof um, uh, developed in gelatin and only made uh, with uh, food and light. Other group of students work with uh, Daniel Spurry idea of déjeuner sur l'herbe, uh, of, of sur l'herbe, which is, will be just the future of food when actually the real food will not exist anymore and there will be another type of spiritual food which with this uh, landscape represented here. And uh, Simulacra work on the idea of how, what will be the future of food um, when there will be um, no more uh, culture and how we will de develop artificial uh, um, culture. And they took the example of the oyster which could grow out of the water, let's say, and they create this, this little um, atmospheric video. It's just like this, but they kind of create this uh, infinite world of culture, of oyster, um, which is kind of this topic, and you will be agree, I think. Um, only based with this kind of a reflection of mirrors and, and create this, uh, this, uh, this infinite uh, library. All this, so was um, actually all this uh, six still life was actually a pretext to develop a um, set for pictures and videos and uh, was actually a pretext to show it to the end dinner which was realized at the end at iFlow in around uh, Geneva, around this uh, this table, and guests was invited actually to a, a dinner to the which was actually was the thematic was the future of food, and all the videos was uh, actually uh, surrounding the the guests. So also I I thanks to the student who did an amazing work in in one week and who I uh, showed them here. Thank you. I don't know if you need, uh, if you have any question or, including the one on Zoom, who I don't know where are, are you, but <laughs> somewhere. I think you have simply died. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
our guests tomorrow. We restart at 10.30, and uh, I will be pretty intense as today, so get ready. And thank you very much for being here until the end. Thank you a lot for the final group. It was super interesting what you presented. I think we are just a little bit tired for reacting. And uh, I suggest that maybe tomorrow, especially in the beginning, before starting, maybe we can have a, a, a general more question uh, huh? up to this moment also. OK, and eventually continue that uh, dinner since has been invoked by Yuri. <laughs> Now. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Thank you very much.